Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me now? Okay, here we go. Praise the Lord. All right. God is good, isn't he? Come on, saints. God is good, isn't he? All the time. There we go. There we go. All the time. I know I'm standing in between your food. I just want to turn. She said, right. I got the children with me. Uh, but, but as usual, uh, you know, I have to start off today's message off by thanking God the Father Amen. for providing every single one of my needs and your needs and this ministry's needs. Uh, by thanking God the Son for redeeming me from my old life you, God. of sin. Thank you, God. Okay? Thank you, God. And by thanking God the Holy Spirit Thank for revealing to me everything He wanted me to speak to you all this morning. Bless you, God. Because yes. without the supernatural yes. guidance of the Holy Spirit, I am simply unable Amen. to preach the Word of God. Amen. 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 <laughs> so a special shout out goes out to our Lord God Almighty yes. for the incredible, for Him being the incredible, indescribable, and immutable God that He is. All right. I would also like to thank. Come on, Brick, stand up. Where are you at this morning? Praise the Lord! Should get the audience today. And guess who wasn't here to hear that? Your wife. Exactly. She had to hear it virtually on the way home. But I want to thank my beautiful wife this yes. morning uh, for the wonderful sacrifices she makes daily for yes. our family. She makes yes. tremendous sacrifices. And words cannot even describe how instrumental she has been to me, my Lord. to our children, All okay, right. and to this ministry. Amen. Yes. Love yes. you, boo. Love yes. you, boo. Yes. Mwah. Love you. Love you. Stuff out the way, right? <laughs> I want to also thank all of our ministers for your faithfulness to Christian yeah. Way Ministries. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I know I may sound like a broken record every time I get up here to treat to preach. But your commitment to God Amen. and to this ministry from Amen. Bible study on Sunday morning to Bible study on Wednesday evening to praise and worship to those who stepped up and preached the word of God from this pulpit to those who supported all of our special events to those who volunteer with us at the homeless shelter all the way down to the scripture readings and even to the ministry each of you bring to others in your individual platforms. If I didn't thank you guys every time I got up here to preach, to me it seems like I'm doing everything myself. And we all know that's a big fat lie from the devil, isn't it? Amen. 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 All right, I'm just keeping it real. Amen. Can I do that? Amen. <laughs> I would also like to thank everyone else, our visitors way from California. Thank you. All right. Amen. our viewers online this morning. Vic over there in the corner, he gets to get the word today. Normally he's back there with the children. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's the combined effort of God, myself, my wife, the ministers, and our church family that truly makes the engine of our ministry run. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and, and last but definitely not least, I, I have to thank the band of pools for rejoining us this Amen. Sunday. Amen. After deciding that vacation was more important than celebrating our anniversary Absolutely. last Sunday. Absolutely. You guys. Don't think I was gonna forget about y'all. Uh-uh. I knew I was gonna get you. I was gonna get you. <laughs> but I thank God that you guys did decide to miss last Sunday to visit family all the way in Antarctica. I mean, Syracuse, okay? Because <laughs> that's how long it felt like, right? Because not only did it allow our church anniversary to extend another week, but it also gave others an opportunity who missed it last week to witness the power of God this amen, week. Amen, amen. <laughs> so because of your absence, we get to celebrate our anniversary part two! Yay! Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor? Neighbor. This is part two? This is part two. Of our anniversary. Of our anniversary. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yeah, you guys are so beautiful. Look at this crowd. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited right now. Okay, I'm moving on. All right, hence the primary reason why I felt led to extend our anniversary for another week was because, to be honest with you, it didn't feel right to celebrate two whole years without the Vanderpools. pool. Yes. All right. Amen. 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 Who, by the way, have been present with us from the very beginning Bless of you. our Bless existence you. as Bless a church. Bless you. Bless you. A celebration minus the Vanderpools who have contributed to the success of this ministry in such Amen. a big way. But there's still more. Alright? So I was really left with no other choice but to do a part two to our anniversary, which I'm sure you guys won't mind since there's food after the service. <laughs> All I have to do is say there's food and people start coming out of the woodworks, right? Uh, Glory to God. <laughs> you know who you are. But anyway, before I move on to the word of God, allow me real quick to catch you all up on what you missed last week. First of all, let me say that last Sunday was so amazing that I kept thinking to myself how we were going to follow up with part two. That's how blessed we were. Elder Tucker was quick, though, to remind me that the Holy Spirit got this. Amen. And I wonder how many of you know that even though you may not know how God is going to do something, there is one thing you can definitely count on. That God is with us. Yes. That God will never leave us yes. nor forsake yes. us. That God will show up. Yes. And guess what? That God will show up. Yes, he will. Yes. When God told Abraham that Sarah would bear a son, God didn't tell him how he was going to do it at her old age. God said in Genesis 18, 10, yes. I will surely return to you about the same time next year and Sarah, your wife, will bear a son. Amen. And then when the Lord asked Sarah why she laughed, <laughs> the Lord said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Remember, saints, as I reiterated last week, the how or the science behind how God does certain things is not always meant for us to know. If we knew every single detail of how God performs every single miracle, it would diminish our faith and dependence on Him. Sometimes, the only thing we need to know is that God will do what He says. That's it. Amen. All we need to know is that God will do what he promises, yes. that God yes. will show up right on time, yes. and that God will do what he needs to do right. whenever he needs to do it yes. according yes. to his will. Yes. Yes. That's really all you need to know. Praise God for the children this morning. Yes. <laughs> when Moses asked God, who should I say your name is to the Israelites, God said, I am. That, that I am. am. <laughs> That's Amen. all you need I to know. That, I am. <laughs> that the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, yes. the God of Isaac, yes. the God of yes. Jacob, and the God yes. that raised Jesus Christ yes. from the dead you, has Lord. sent me yes. to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's all you need to know, saints. Thank you, Father. So when it came to how God was going to follow up last week's service with part two, I was kindly reminded that God will come through just as he promised. Yes. And yes. I'm super excited this morning to reveal to you exactly how God came through in the clutch with today's message. He never ceases to amaze me. But before I do that, before I do that, okay, uh, I really need to take this opportunity to share with those who weren't here with us last week how far God has taken this ministry. Can I do that real quick? Yeah. All right, we went from sharing a church. <laughs> yeah, that was our first experience. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> then we went to renting out the VFW, the Veteran Foreign Wars Hall. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Huh? That was crazy. That was empty. <laughs> the work that we put.
put into this. My goodness. Hey, look, and this was before we had our own place. We had to travel with all of our equipment in the wow. back of our trunk every week just to set up service. Wow. Incredible. God was so good. Ten Elder Tucker's living room. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I don't know. I think that was just a bad thing for you, kid. I mean, we made it work. I mean, look, look. I mean, look, we got Darius and, and Jacqueline there, and they just, they just in tune with what God is doing. Look, we got Dana back there. She's like, I don't know what's going on here. But we, we going to roll with it. And, and, and look, look, they super activated. The elders over there, they like, hey, so right. we just following the pastor. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then, look at Mama on the couch. Come on, Mama. You know she's about to fall asleep right there. She knows she ain't going to make it. <laughs> she's not going to make it. Harry, you're like, man, this couch feels so good. Like, you know, he's up right now. I wish churches had couches for their kids, right? Praise the Lord. And then we went to this place. This is what it looked like before we said anything else. We went from that to God. this. Yes, thank you, Lord. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We went from absolutely nothing to an official 501c3 church ministry in Virginia Beach, Virginia, all in the span of two years. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, please everybody, if you got your Bibles, I 
want you to read and follow along with me what God's Word has to say this morning. Alright? For there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Amen. Yes. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate. A time for war, a time for peace. Yes. What does the worker gain for his toil? Jesus. I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Yes. He has also set eternity in the hearts yes. of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good yes. while they live. Yes. That everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift My from Lord, God. God. And for those who weren't here last week, I preached out of verse 13 that the yes. reason why we should find satisfaction in our toll is because the scripture says that it's an actual gift yes. of God. Yes. Now, I understand that many of us, including myself, find it hard to equate toil, labor, work, ministry, jobs, okay, overnight shifts, sweat from your brow as a gift from God. <laughs> I got some, I got one response over there. For me, whenever I think of work, gift is nowhere to be found in my mind. I'm just being honest with you this morning. Whenever I had to cut my grass, my motivation for cutting it wasn't because it was a gift from God. <laughs> Trust me, it was so I didn't have to pay a city fine. Okay? <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I think of work, Mostly, I think of punishment. <laughs> Only the Lord knows how many times I asked him while I was at work, what did I do to deserve this kind of punishment? Has anyone ever felt like that before, or is it just me? <laughs> I got Darius to speak up a little bit over there. I mean, the last thing I think about when it comes to work is a neatly wrapped gift under the tree with my name on it. I know. So when I came across this particular scripture, the significance of the gift part of our labor didn't really hit me until last week when I did the message on how we should find satisfaction in our yes. toil. And I truly believe this verse can really come in handy, especially for those who are struggling to find any kind of satisfaction in their jobs. Why? Because whenever a case of the stinking thinking occurs in your minds about your jobs, guess what? You can capture every thought and make them obedient to Christ by reminding yourself of this verse to find satisfaction in your toil because it's a gift from God. Easier said than done, right? <laughs> I know. But what's even more amazing about everything I just said is that majority of this pertains to part one of the message I did last week. Part two didn't come to me until this Friday while I was at CHKD with the Johnson family waiting for baby David to come out of surgery. As I was sitting there looking over a few verses to see what direction the Lord wanted me to go in, the Spirit led me right back to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And after I finished reading the rest of the chapter, I was automatically convicted in my spirit regarding what I should preach for part two today. I thought to myself, wow. How perfect would it be to have our second part of our church anniversary come from the second part of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, where God can give the saints a second reason why we need to find satisfaction in our toil. My Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, Lord. And I'm convinced this is God doing, not mine, because I'm not that smart to come up with such an idea. <laughs> he said, Amen. Go ahead. Come on, Deacon. I ain't need you to second guess me on that one. <laughs> he said, Amen. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. I would have never imagined that God would have led me to preach out of Ecclesiastes to begin with, let alone come back the following week and preach the second part of the same, the same very chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He leads all the way. Yeah. So if you still have your Bibles open, please, I want you to follow along with me. Verse 14, it says, I know that everything God does will endure forever. Amen. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away from Amen. it. God does it so that men will revere him. Amen. Whatever Amen. is already been and what 
will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. And then I saw something else under the sun. Hmm, I wonder what this is. In the place of judgment, wickedness was there. In the place of justice, wickedness was there. I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity, a time for every deed. Then Solomon said, I also thought as for men, God test them. Everyone say test. Test. So that they may see that they are like the animals. Jesus. Man's fate is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. Mm. As one dies, so the other dies. My Lord. All have the same breath. Man has no advantage over the animal. Everything is, is meaningless. Yes. What in the world is he talking about? Here? All go to the same place. All come mm. from dust. And to dust all return. Mm. Who knows? If the spirit of man rises upward. And if the spirit of the animal goes down into the My earth. Lord. So I saw that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work because that is his lot. But who can bring him to see what will happen after him? Wow. I, 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 I just bear with me real quick as I break this down. Now what's interesting about this particular passage pertains to the part, uh, to the part I kept stumbling over. In verse 19 it says, surely the fate of human beings is like that of the animals. The same fate awaits them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All have the same breath. Humans have no advantage over the animal. And then Solomon says at the end of the verse that everything is meaningless. In the KJV, for those who follow the KJV, it says everything is vanity. Or everything is not. I like when you say that. Everything is all not. <laughs> everything is for not. So the first question I asked myself when I read this passage, well, why in the world would the Lord want me to preach out of this passage? Because it almost sounds like Solomon is awfully depressed when he compares the fate of human beings to animals. Mm. And as I'm sitting at the hospital trying to figure out what happened to Solomon for him to feel a certain type of way, I'm wondering, was it all of them wives and concubines that stressed him out to the point he's comparing human life to animal life? <laughs> Come on, Holy Spirit. I know the struggle trying to please one wife, one, one wife, 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 let alone trying to please a thousand wives. <laughs> Brits looking at me like, you better not. Uh, you better not. Can you imagine being married to a thousand spouses? <laughs> That's like a thousand Brit Brits running around in my house. <laughs> Spare me, Lord. Okay? That's like a thousand Harriets running around or a thousand uh, Chantels. Or a thousand tips, okay? A thousand jacklins running around in the house, all right? <laughs> so to me, it's no wonder why Solomon appears to be just depressed in this particular passage because he just couldn't handle all of them. My goodness. Furthermore, in verse 20, Solomon says, all go to the same place. <laughs> all come from the dust and to the dust they shall return. Amen. Amen. And then he says, who knows? If the human spirit rises upward, and if the spirit of the animal goes down to the earth. And at this point, I'm convinced that Solomon truly needs to see a therapist or something because the struggle is so real right now. <laughs> okay? But in all seriousness, what stuck out to me the most regarding this particular passage is the part where he says everything is meaningless. If the fate of animals is the same as the fate of human beings, then it makes sense why Solomon would equate the two together and conclude that everything is meaningless, right? Yeah. However, Solomon can't possibly mean that life in general has no meaning. Or that humanity is no better than the stray cats that live around this church like the theory of evolution would have you believe. Why? Because according to the word of God, Humanity was created in his image and after his likeness, which makes you special and more valuable than the animal. And I'm sure Solomon, who was considered the wisest man in all of human history, was well aware of this very fact. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, what am I missing here? What piece of the puzzle do I need to complete the correct interpretation of this passage? I'm like, come on, Lord, what's the key to unlock it? <coughs> now, mind you, the battle of the mind was taking place in the waiting room at CHKV when the Lord led me to look up the word meaningless in the Hebrew language. And as soon as I did that, voila, voila, it all made sense to me. 
That was the final piece to the puzzle I have been looking for. Finally, Lord. Are you guys ready for the answer? I'm almost done. Are you guys ready for the answer? Did you know that according to the Hebrew language, meaningless, Havel, everyone turn to your neighbor and say, Havel, Havel also means a vapor or a breath. So when Solomon says that everything is meaningless, Solomon is not saying everything is without meaning. No. Solomon is basically saying that all is but a breath. That all is but a vapor. That all is but a shadow. And that all is like rising smoke that ascends to the heavens and quickly vanishes. That's what it means. When Solomon says that the fate of humans is no different than the fate of animals, he's not referring to the value of human beings to animals. No. He's referring to the fate of their existence. Here, one minute, gone, Amen. the next minute. Amen. That's the commonality between the two. Life is but a vapor. Which is the second reason why we should find satisfaction in our toil. Because everything is meaningless. Everything is vanity. Everything is but a breath. Everything is a chasing after the wind. And everything is just a vapor. Even James, the Lord's brother, was well aware of this when he said in 4-7, What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Poof. They're gone. Everything is essentially meaningless. It's here one minute and gone the next minute. Your life is but a vapor. Your childhood is but a vapor. Your relationships is but a vapor. Your school years is but a vapor. Your sufferings is but a vapor. Your careers are but a vapor. Your time, guess what? Is but a vapor. History itself is but a vapor. And the two years we spent together as a ministry is now but a vapor. Everything is meaningless. Which is why Solomon says in verse 22, so I saw that there is nothing better for a person than to enjoy their work because that is their lot. In other words, for the believer in Christ, there is nothing better than to enjoy your work in the kingdom of God because yes. not only is it but a vapor, but your service, check this out, your service to God is your portion, your service to God is your share, your service to God is on, your Bishop. part, and your service to God is your reward. Yes. Come on, and when you really think about it, your labor for God, no matter what it is you do for a living, shouldn't come to you as a surprise that it is a gift from God. Why? Because in the very beginning of Genesis 2.15, God took Adam and put him in the Garden of Eden, and then he told him to work in it. Amen. You see, God didn't just create us to be busybodies. Amen. Huh? Amen. But he created us to work, he created us to share in his work, and he created us to find satisfaction in his work. Amen. And likewise... Christian Way Ministries is going to take advantage of this very hour to enjoy our work because it is our portion, because it is our share, because this is our reward, and because look how fast two years that came and went Amen. by. Amen. It's all but a vapor now, saints. Another reason, I'm almost done, I promise. Another reason why it's important to find satisfaction in your tool is because of, of what we spend most of our time throughout the week in doing. What do we do with most of our time throughout the week? Work. Work. That's right. Did you know that out of 168 hours per week, we spend approximately 35% of those hours sleeping and approximately 25% of those hours at work? At least more. My brother Jay, well, how many hours you said you worked this week? 66 hours. That's, that's based off an average of 40 hours per week. So you're spending almost 40 hours. I mean, 40% of your life at work. According to the average, the, the, the statistics, the average person will spend approximately 35% of their time awake at work over a 50-year career. From 18 years old all the way to the age of retirement. Which makes complete sense why Solomon would say that there is nothing better for a person than to enjoy their work. Because that's all they have to make, their, to make it worth their while. That's all they have. None of the physical things in this world is going to find you true happiness. Not even Solomon and all of his splendor. So guess what? 
you might as well enjoy your work because that's all you will spend most of your time doing. Amen? Make sense? Make sense? Furthermore, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 3.10 that I've seen the burden God has laid upon yes. men. Yes. Which is why it's extremely important to find satisfaction in that burden of work because it's all a chasing after the wind. So if you find yourself, check this out, if you find yourself miserable, okay, at your own job, please start planning a way to either find satisfaction at your job or start planning to do something that you can find satisfaction in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> My brother works in the shipyard, so I feel his pain. I feel I, I was a ricker there. I quit after about a year. I definitely wasn't finding no satisfaction in that place. Because... Not only will you spend at least 35% of your life working, but it's all the chasing after the wind. Yes. So you might as well find something you enjoy doing because the enjoyment part is a gift from God. And for those who find themselves in retirement mode, I know there's a few of you in here. Guess what? There is still a vision for you to complete. And there's still someone God wants you to meet. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? All you have to do is pray to God for what he wants you to do next. And go find a ministry to serve in. Go find a community to volunteer in. Or go find a charity to go help in. Amen. Okay? Amen. Just because you retire, don't mean that the mission is over. Amen. I had to include that because I knew we had retired <laughs> in our congregation here, right? And as I close, thank you guys so much for your patience. Remember, saints, that God can use you no matter where you are in your career. But you have to be willing to serve him regardless of what society says about you sharing your faith with others on the job site. Amen? Amen. You have to be led by the power of the Holy Spirit when you do so. Amen. Many times people go to work every day without even asking God how they can serve him in the very opportunities he has given you. Every morning before you leave out of your house, your prayer should be, God, let your will be Amen. done on yes. earth as it is yes. in heaven. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 40, whoever you did for one of the least of these, you did for me. Amen. Yes. And when serving God becomes your number one priority in your individual platforms, you will indeed find the complete satisfaction in your toil because yes. it doesn't get any better than serving the creator of the whole universe, my Jesus Lord, Christ. It doesn't get any better than that, my saints. Lord. I'm going to tell you real quick that I have not found any greater satisfaction than being a pastor. Jesus, Amen. praise God. I never thought in a hundred years that it would come down to this point. But I, I find myself not wanting to do anything else besides serve God now. So what did I did? I, I resigned from my job, by the way. Yeah, so I'm in between jobs now. Y'all know what that means, unemployed. Okay? And I signed up to go back to BCU to become a hospital chaplain. That's how bad I want to serve God. And the Lord knows I got about $3,000 worth of bills on my end that I need to pay that. I'm just praying that the Lord will provide. <laughs> where all I want to do now is serve God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So as we move forward in mm. year number three, mm. remember that your life without Christ is meaningless in a sense that it's purposeless. Mm. Mm -hmm. Which means is that you have been slacking off in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now is the time to get it right because the way time is flying by my right Lord, now. My Lord. Who knows what tomorrow is going to bring. Amen. Or Amen. what distractions you will encounter to prevent you from getting right with the Lord. Amen. Ooh. Amen. If there is any sin in your life, it's easy, folks. All you have to do is confess your sins. My Lord. Because he is able and just to forgive us yes. all our Thank sins. You, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. Just a couple of days ago, what happened? Mm -hmm. They drove a van into a crowd in Barcelona, Spain, and killed 13 people. Jesus. Listen, folks, the media is not going to tell you that there is a terrorist attack happening every day of the year. Y'all yeah, yeah, saw the, the, the statistics, yeah. are you woke? Minimum two a day. Yeah. Terrorist attacks. See what happened in Charlottesville. So please don't keep putting your relationship with Christ to the side because you never know. Amen? Amen. Amen. And last but definitely not least, we have to always remember what the Word of God says. 
when it comes to our service to the Lord as we move forward into year number three. That we cannot grow weary in doing good. We cannot grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap our harvest if we do not give up according to Galatians 6, 9. And to always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on and give God some praise. God is good all the time. And guess what? It's our anniversary. It's our anniversary. Come on. It's our anniversary. Oh, come on. Come on. Well, praise God. I thank all of you for joining us today. I'm super excited about what God is doing. Listen, saints, your relationship in Christ is the most important thing you have in your life. If you slack on that, ain't no telling. This is serious, folks. Life is but a vapor. I can't stress that more than what I just did. When you step out of these doors, guess what you step into? The devil's playground. 1 John 5, 19 says that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. That's what it is. That's the truth that shall set you free. Please make it an effort to make your relationship with God stronger than what it is today. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet.